What comes to mind first when we think about rocket engines? Thrust. That's right. Indeed, SpaceX is incredibly focused on this specification of their engine. Their latest generation of engines, Raptor 3, boasts a remarkable thrust that has significantly increased compared to its predecessors. And in fact, many design details have been upgraded specifically to optimize this spec. The point is, how exactly has SpaceX upgraded the design to achieve such incredible thrust? And just how impressive are the results? Let's find out in today's episode. When it comes to rocket technology, the key factor everyone focuses on is thrust. This isn't by chance, it's physics. Rockets face a massive challenge right from the start. They have to push through the Earth's dense atmosphere. That atmosphere acts as a serious barrier to anything trying to break free of it. To launch a rocket, the basic principle is that the thrust needs to surpass the rocket's own weight. This is captured in what's called the thrust to weight ratio, one of the most critical metrics in rocket design. Once that ratio exceeds one, the rocket can overcome Earth's gravity and begin its climb. For a massive spacecraft like SpaceX's Starship, this challenge is on a whole new level. Starship is designed to carry both cargo and people to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Standing at a total height of up to 120 meters, when paired with the Super Heavy booster, Starship requires an incredibly powerful thrust to get off the ground. As Starship evolves through its different versions, from the early prototypes to longer and heavier models like Starship 2 and 3, the thrust has to keep increasing to maintain or even improve its flight performance. In the early stage of a rocket's journey, right as it lifts off, thrust plays a crucial role. This is when the rocket faces the greatest air resistance and needs to accelerate quickly to reach a escape velocity. So it's no surprise that SpaceX has been heavily focused on improving the thrust of their engines. As a result, enter the Raptor 3. Raptor 3, the latest and most powerful version, has hit an impressive milestone with a thrust of 280 tons, 50 tons more than the Raptor 2, and a whopping 95 tons more than the original Raptor 1. But how did they achieve this? There are two main ways to boost a rocket engine's thrust, increasing the throat diameter or raising the combustion chamber pressure. In the case of the Raptor engines, SpaceX has focused on ramping up chamber pressure with each upgrade. Looking at the chamber pressures across the Raptor generations, there's a clear, impressive trend. Raptor 1 operated at 250 bar, Raptor 2 at 300 bar, and now Raptor 3 at Uchu's Elibar. Higher pressure in the combustion chamber means the hot gases are expelled through the nozzle at even faster speeds. According According to basic principles of dynamics, the faster the exhaust gases, the greater the thrust generated. This is why SpaceX has been relentlessly pushing the pressure of the Raptor 3 to such extreme levels. Well, 350 bars is equivalent to the weight of 16 Statues of Liberty pressing down on just one square meter. The combustion chamber walls of the Raptor 3 are probably some of the most heat and pressure resistant structures ever built by humans. I have immense respect for SpaceX's material science team. There aren't many things that can withstand that kind of pressure and temperature. Beyond increasing the chamber pressure, SpaceX also adjusted the throat diameter of the engine during the Raptor's development. With Raptor 2, they applied both methods. Not only did they raise the chamber pressure from 250 bar to 300 bar, but they also expanded the throat by about 7%, allowing for significant more fuel and oxidizer to flow through. The result? An impressive leap in thrust, up 24%, from 185 tons with Raptor 1 to 230 tons with Raptor 2. However, with Raptor 3, SpaceX seems to have made a surprising and calculated move. The throat on Raptor 3 appears to be narrower, possibly smaller than that of Raptor 2, and closer in size to Raptor 1. The goal behind this shift might be to recover about three seconds of specific impulse, ISP, that they sacrificed with Raptor 2. What's incredible here is that SpaceX has managed to increase both the specific impulse and thrust at the same time. A truly impressive feat in rocket engine design, where these two factors often trade off against against each other. Specifically, to boost ISP, exhaust gases need to escape at higher velocities. This is typically achieved by increasing the temperature and pressure inside the combustion chamber while decreasing the throat area. However, to get those gases to escape faster, you often have to reduce the mass flow rate of the exhaust, which usually results in lower overall thrust. As you can see, optimizing both specs is extremely challenging. But SpaceX has started to pull it off. Genius. When evaluating a rocket engine, Thrust is the first thing we look at. However, engineers aim to increase thrust to improve another key metric, the thrust-to-weight ratio, TWR. This ratio measures how much thrust an engine can produce compared to its own weight. A high TWR means the engine can generate significant thrust without adding much weight. This is especially important in rocket design as it directly impacts the vehicle's ability to launch and its overall efficiency. A prime example of an engine with an impressive TWR is SpaceX's Merlin 1D. This engine has set a new standard in the space industry with a TWR of 184. 
the highest of any rocket engine currently in operation. This high TWR has made the Merlin 1D crucial to the success of missions using the Falcon family of rockets. And with the debut of Raptor 3, SpaceX is proving they can compete head-to-head -head with the very standards they've set. The Raptor 3 has achieved a TWR equivalent to the Merlin 1D, which is truly an extraordinary accomplishment. To make this happen, SpaceX reduced the weight of the Raptor 3 to just 1,525 kilograms by streamlining the design. Many fuel lines were eliminated, and the remaining ones were seamlessly integrated into the engine's body. Inside the engine structure, there are likely several fuel and coolant channels that can't be seen from the outside. These channels play a crucial role in regulating combustion chamber temperatures and limiting heat transfer between engines. This advanced technique, known as regenerative cooling, is a cutting-edge method in modern rocket engine design. This technique not only boosts combustion efficiency, but also eliminates the need for complex thermal protection systems, significantly reducing the dry weight of the engine. This allows SpaceX to optimize key engine factors without increasing weight or complicating the structure. SpaceX's Raptor 3 is truly a masterpiece of modern rocket engine science. Let's start by comparing it to some of the most powerful engines ever built. Of course, we can't forget the legendary F-1 engine, the one that powered humans to the moon. The F-1, often called the mother of all rocket engines, boasted an enormous 690 tons of thrust. Sounds like it easily outmatches the Raptor, right? Not really. Listen, the thrust of an engine is proportional to the square of its throat diameter. This means that if you double the throat diameter, the thrust increases by a factor of four. However, there's a big catch. The weight of the nozzle is proportional to the cube of the throat diameter. In other words, if you double the throat diameter, the weight increases by a factor of eight. This is why when an engine's throat gets too large, the thrust increases, but the weight grows even faster, leading to a lower TWR and reducing overall efficiency. Let's take a look at the F1. It stood an impressive 5.8 meters tall, with an engine bell diameter of 3.7 meters and a dry weight of 8.4 tons. This was clearly a massive engine. It had a specific impulse, ISP, of 263 seconds while burning RP-1 fuel at a chamber pressure of just 70 bar and a thrust-to-weight ratio of 94 to 1. These are rather modest numbers when compared to the Raptor 3. When an engine focuses too much on one factor, like thrust, while sacrificing others, it might not be the optimal design. Even though a single Raptor has about 2.5 times less thrust than an F1, with the same total engine weight, we can achieve more than double the thrust by using multiple Raptor engines instead of just one F1. That's the difference between a modern masterpiece and a marvel of the past, but the F1 is a thing of history. To fairly evaluate the Raptor 3, let's compare it to one of the powerful engines of today. Blue Origin's BE-4. When Blue Origin first introduced the BE-4 in 2014, they claimed it was the most powerful Methalox engine ever designed. And at that time, compared to the first version of the Raptor, the only other Methalox engine in existence, it was true. However, since the BE-4 was first introduced, its design has hardly changed. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Raptor line has undergone significant improvements. The Raptor 3 is a thoroughly refined version, making the engine more compact, streamlined, and reliable. And I can say this in just one sentence. And compared to the BE-4, every specification of the Raptor 3 outshines it, making it the most powerful Methalox engine available today. So, there's no doubt that the Raptor 3 is the best rocket engine now, right? All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.